Hey Bass Geek here. I'm under a tree catching some shade in the middle of July. Happy 4th of July. I don't know if you'll see this before or after, but happy 4th no matter what. And I'm going to talk to you about my top five favorite baits and techniques for the month of July. Oh guys, check out the Camus, the Green Goblin. Got a little bit of mess right there already, but hey, you ain't fishing if you ain't making a mess, right? I mean, it is, after all, a boat to be fished out of, a bass boat. Speaking of boats, guys, I wanna give a big shout out to the company that is sponsoring this video, BIA, Boaters Insurance Agency. Guys, they do nothing but boat insurance. And I wanna be the first to tell you guys, they know what you need probably better than you do when it comes to coverage. Are you fishing tournaments? Well, you've got to have a certain kind of insurance in case something happens on the water to you, God forbid, or anybody with you or anybody out there just running the lakes. And we know guys, it's July. Lay some nut jobs out there and some other types of watercraft. You know what I'm saying? Now, all that being said, that's what I love about them. They know what I need as a YouTuber. They knew what I needed because I'm working with Camus. They knew what I needed because I was fishing tournaments and BFLs, stuff that I didn't even know and understand. But they cover both my boats, Old Ruby, the Old Triton, and the new Camus. Guys, BIA, Boaters Insurance Agency, all they do is boat insurance. I had another boat insurance agency and uh man they blew them out of the water so make sure you go check them out links in the description again thanks to bia insurance all right let's get back to it it is july we're going to talk about my top five favorite baits in july now i fish a unique place this lake that i'm on today top secret lake p is a very highlands reservoir the water temps still 73, 74 degrees. Very super ultra clear water. Now you go over into Tennessee. This is on the Virginia side. I live right on the border for you guys that don't know. And you run into a whole host of other lakes. So, you know, you get into South Holston, which is also a clear lake. Norris, which is also a clear lake, depending on where you are up or down, how dirty the water is. The water temps can range anywhere there from, you know, mid 70s to 80 right now in July. Now, everything's just a little bit behind this year for me. For example, there's still a little bit of a shad spawn going on on this lake. Bluegills are still on the bed on this lake. On the Tennessee side, that's probably been over the most part, the most part in most lakes, uh, like Cherokee and Douglas and all that, probably, for a month. So this year's baits are probably going to be a little different than last year's. There's going to be a lot more moving baits. You know, June and early July, I really like to crank, but I think everybody talks about cranking. So let me show you something a little bit different that'll cover clear water to dirty water. I think it's really cool. So let's talk about, uh, let's just call it my favorite baits for the month of July. Are they the best? Meh, they're fun, at least for me. I like these types of bites. So I'm gonna share with you, you know, kind of my favorite July baits. A lot of them will be, you know, you can use in June, a lot of them you can use in August, but uh, this is my top five, not somebody else's. All right, let's talk about it. So let's talk about from the top of the water column down. That's kind of how I work things. Uh, I love top water. You guys have seen me put out numerous top water videos. I love to fish top waters. And these are three of my favorite and most productive top waters pretty much all summer long. Number one, if I'm fishing in clear water, I mean, there's just nothing clear, calm water. There's nothing that will beat a, a spook or a spook junior you know the uh, one knocker is my favorite if it's clear calm clear water slick water whether it's bluebird sky or you know a little bit of cloud 
good translucent colors. Now I will go to a bait. This is the Damiki Rambler 120. Great looking bait. Now I've done a lot of videos talking about the different body styles and how that causes walking baits to be different. And this is one of the walking baits where it's got a little more splash. It's got a little tighter wobble. You're gonna work this bait a little faster. So a little bit of chop, that's where you want this. Now, when we start talking about the Spooks and the Spook Juniors, those are going to be their best in just slick water. Just good, wide wobbles. And you can hear, this is also a one knocker. So the Damiki Rambler is another one. I just, I think that one knocker sound, especially in a little bit more slick conditions, is the way you want to go in the summer. You know, they've heard all that, you know, that loud, penetrating, uh, you know, multiple BB sound pretty much all spring. And when you're really trying to call up those big bites out in just a little bit deeper water, uh, during the summertime, that one knocker really travels, that deep knock really travels throughout the water and, and calls the bass into it. And if you guys haven't seen the July box, Bass Geek box video, we talk about a popper. This has quickly become my favorite popper. Now, I don't like it on mono. I don't like it on braid. I like to throw this on canine. I don't like a lot of stretch because I don't get the same action. I throw it on canine fluoro, which is not fluorocarbon. It is a copolymer, very little stretch, neutral buoyancy. And the reason why is because I want this to respond. As you can see, it's got a lip. So it'll pop just like a normal bait, but you can also just swing and drag it and it's got a great little wobble to it. And you talk about getting bit when they start to push that shad in July and as the thermocline comes up and they start to suspend, if your pond or your lake doesn't have a lot of current, that right there is gonna get your arm jerked out of socket, I can promise you. All right, let's talk about suspended middle of the water column, and this is one of my favorites. This is the Duo Realis. It is really the only spy bait I use, and this is one of my favorite color. I think it's called Ghost Minnow. You can see there's some teeth marks on it. This little puppy right here has done some work for me. Now, I don't fish it a whole lot for smallmouth. Um, they make the Alpha, and the Alpha is a great little bait, but for whatever reason in this lake, the standard minnow style gets bit for me better. This is a great little bait, and I use it more and more in conjunction with my live scope. I know a lot of you guys just hate that, but you know, again, I've got it, I've paid for it, I'm using it. It's just what it is. That is one of those baits though and but the truth is i've used this forever ever in a day without a live scope and i love it because it is such a good bait for ledge fishing or fishing out on points during the summer you know that deeper water stuff for largemouth again so it's a hard bait one of the things that i can tell you is just remember, if it's clear, if it's sunny, if it's slick, this ain't the bait you need to pick up, okay? You got a little bit of overcast, touch of chop. You don't want a lot of chop. This bait right here is going to flat slam them. Most places where I fish, they've seen a lot of crankbaits. They've seen a lot of spinner baits. They've seen a lot of um, little finesse swim baits. They've seen a lot of underspins. And so this is something just a little bit different to throw out there and get another bite or two. It's got a great fall. That's the key to the duo too. That's the reason I love it so much. Now we're gonna talk about Dominky style or soft jerk baits, right? You guys know that forever in a day, I've talked about a belly weight soft jerk bait. And this is one of my favorites right here. This is one of my favorite. This is the Ghost Shad by Strike King. I think it's a caffeine shad 
or something anyway there'll be links in the description to everything by the way that does help the channel most of them are two tackle warehouse doesn't cost you a thing but does help the channel out the reason why i like this so much is because it is a great follow-up to a swim bait or an underspin uh, which we'll talk about next this thing with a little eighth ounce belly weight these are gamakatsu hooks they're super line hooks are a little thicker I, I wished i could find a belly weight like this and i'm sure it's out there so if you guys know tell me in the comments uh that's like an eighth ounce that's kind of my go-to with a finer wire hook because i tend to throw this on spinning rod uh spinning rod and what ends up happening is that bigger hook you know you don't get as good of a hook set but man i've caught a ton of bass doing this and one of the things that I love about this is if you're throwing stuff like the spy bait, like an underspin, like a uh, swim bait, a bigger swim bait, and they hit it, but they don't take it, follow up with this. Throw it out there, let it sink. I want it to sink. That's why I don't use a fluke as much is because this is... Uh, has a little more salt in it. It's a little heavier than a fluke, so it gets down. And then with the eighth ounce, if I'm fishing out there real deep, you know, 15, 20 feet, it'll just kind of death spiral down. And then I just twitch it straight up. Let it fall and twitch it straight up. Um, you can really target those bass again using, you know, using my Garmin uh, live scope. But uh, you will a lot of times when you throw the throw out there, pull those bass off and if they don't hit a, uh, you know whatever bait moving bait you throw at them this right here will uh, clean it up for you likewise with this little bait now this little bait you know the Damiki rig I'm gonna call it sniping because what I do is I get out there and uh, this is a Damiki armor shad I think it's a pro, pro blue red I believe uh, again links in the description uh it's translucent you'll notice a lot of my baits especially fishing on this lake today are translucent uh non-painted head so it, you know it looks real natural but uh this is a great bait you know when the bite is tough they're suspended out there this little bait right here will get you two three four bites that otherwise you might not have during the day I mean, it's been a tough day for me today. I've talked to several people that I know out on the lake here and they've had zero bites. I've at least put three in the boat and it's all been on this little bait right here. Uh, several different heads, check it out. I've got a video that really goes in depth on the forward facing sonar and the use of this bait. And just another, just a ton of videos talking about tight lining uh, during the winter time, talking about, you know, a hundred different ways of using this but uh, you don't have to have a forward-facing sonar to use this little bait if you know roughly where they're at trust me <laughs> they'll eat it and by the way my two favorites are the armor shad and the yum forward-facing sonar minnow great great little bait a little bit longer and some really good natural colors in that bait now let's talk about swim baits guys this is my go-to size the five to six inch soft plastic swim bait lord i've got it wedged in there and look at that that is ghost shad that is a ramsey baits man if you want some good stuff he lives right up the road from me and is a one-man show make sure you go check out ramsey and like i always say about these uh, small companies these custom bait makers you need a color, he'll make it for you. And he can make some beautiful swim baits. Uh, if you haven't seen some of the unboxings I've did in the past, just trust me. This is probably my clear water killer right here. Go to, now I always couple that with a ledge head. Uh, my go to weight is a half ounce, depending on the current and everything. If you haven't heard me talk about these heads, it might be time to do another video to talk about these heads again, actually my favorite head it is my go-to head and there's a lot of reasons why now all that being said man in clear water you can't beat this color in the summer i mean it just gets eat this is my go-to right here and you know i like to uh, 
I like to fish it around anything, you know, over top of brush piles, uh, down rocks, uh, contour banks with it, uh, sink it to the bottom, fish for uh, bass up. I love to use, uh, use it for suspended bass. It is a great suspended bass killer. And then, now I use that a whole lot, even with, you know, forward facing sonar, and that's a video we'll have to do. But this right here is when I'm seeing them out there suspended and I think I can pick them off, you know, the Kitech, the Domeki Armor Shad Paddle Tail, which is, you know, tiny, great finesse swim bait. Uh, these are the swim baits that I am going to use to get those bites. And again, that is a video that's coming. We'll talk about using swim baits with forward facing sonar. Uh, it, it's pretty neat because even with the big ones, it really has changed how you can interact with the bass. But uh, most of the time, I'll tell you right now, when you're throwing these baits out there, these I love to, to throw on the bank with like an eighth or a quarter and reel them, you know, 45 degree the bank, reel them down to where you're ticking the bottom just every once in a while. I always say if you're you're not touching the bottom, you're reeling too fast. If you're touching the bottom constantly, you're reeling too slow. And a lot of times you feel it start snugging up. If you're coming over something, give it a quick little pop. You wouldn't believe how many times you'll catch some fish doing that. Other than that, the you know the big one and the big one and the uh, Tennessee River Bling, the underspin. Whether you're fishing a giant underspin or a, a big one like this or you're fishing even a bigger one, which I love to fish, just steady reel it. And I can't stress to you, slow is never slow enough, all right? Count it down, you know, if you're, you're graphing and you see those fish down there at a certain level, this is gonna fall probably about a, this is a half ounce and, and something like a little underspin like this with a heavier little uh, swim bait on it is probably gonna fall about a, a, a foot and a half a second to two feet a second. So, you know, count it down there and uh, just, just swim it nice and slow, nice and slow. You know, you will get thumped on this. It, there is no better bait for suspended bass. I'm just gonna tell you. Matching the hatch with the underspin is, is always good. And something else, when it comes to swim baits, I know everybody loves the uh you know it's kind of what got me into throwing the bigger the five six seven eight inch soft plastic swim baits is now you know everybody's throwing those finesse swim baits or or they want to throw the big hard swim baits and the forgotten swim baits are those middle ground again those five six seven inch swim baits and you couple those with an underspin boys and girls hoo-ha it can get good fast. Now check this bad boy out. Listen, I love my pulse jigs, okay? They come teeny tiny. You guys seen me do a video on those in the uh, spring when I was out on Del Hollow, and they come in mammoth size. But uh, this is a beautiful big, and really, I'll be honest with you, they make these little tails, and I love it on the small one, but I'm not a fan of it on this one. I think you need to be bigger. Uh, I don't, I just didn't bring any with me, I forgot. But like um, a fluke, a five inch uh, caffeine shad, um, a Jerky J, Pintail, I think it's what it's called, by Scott's Burrows Tackle is great. I like a little bigger bait. Now that's gonna provide a little bit of lift, but I love these. You know, they're, they're good and clear and they're big. I, and I'm gonna tell you, when you're cranking and the crankbait dies, put this on the bottom. Put it on the bottom and just slow roll it. You will flat rock their worlds. And what I love about this head is that they have done so much work. It's not just a round head with a, a deal on it. You can reel this pretty quickly too. And it stays, you know, right side up. It don't blow out and roll over. 
Uh, they can tell you more about it than I can, but the great thing about this bait is you can really reel this at slower speeds and it's going to stay upright. It's going to have the perfect action to it or you can slow roll it and just get thumped. If you need, a lot of times what I'll do when I'm looking at the forward facing sonar, when I see a fish starting to track it, as it starts to get closer, I'll slowly speed up. And as you speed up, a lot of times that's what it takes to get that bass to bite. So you'll speed up, he'll speed up, you'll speed up a little bit more, he'll speed up. And then you just kind of ease into it and whack, man. They just come up and crush it. So great for when you have a little dirtier water, great for when you want a reaction bait uh, bite, but you know, they've seen every crankbait coming and going. This is a great head, and guys, by the way, it'll catch everything. I mean, this head will catch everything. The pulse fish, for lack of a better term, pulse fish uh, jig, but most of you are gonna know it as a scrounger head. That is number four. And like I said, most of the time I fish it very close to the bottom, so that's why it's there. Now, last but not least, you know it, guys. It's big worm time, big worm. And you know, this is a big magnum trick worm, I believe by Zoom, you know, on a shaky head. I believe this is a Cumberland Pro uh, mag shaky. I love their mag shakies. You know, you gotta have something on the bottom. I love a jig, of course, a football head jig. But if you wanna get a bunch of bites, man, it's that, you know, whether you Texas rig it, whether you Carolina rig it, you know, here's you something two you know the uh mag old monster the old monsters are good this is a giant one mag old monster i love this throwing it in those deep brush piles and of course we couldn't talk about big worms without the girthy bfw boys Woo! look at that what i love about that is you can use it and and we'll talk about some uh mag other stuff some some mag uh chatter baits big one and one and a half ounces that I like to use that tail as a trailer for. That's my top five. I hope you guys give some of them a try. Maybe that you're not used to using or that you're not using, but uh, that's sort of my top five go-to baits. I, I love to fish them this time of year. Look how clear this water is. Look at that. There's my eight foot power poles completely submerged into the bottom and i didn't even put my sunglasses over it to show you check out waterland by the way links in the description that's it man that is that's kind of my favorite my top five favorite july baits and i'll pretty much fish those all summer you know they're still bluegill up here shallow right now this bite's going to get better and better as we go along but uh yeah you know Tell me what you guys think. Tell me what your top five is down in the description below. And uh, tell me if you've used any of these baits that I've talked about today. Uh, if not, man, you should. As always, questions and comments in the comment section below. Remember, don't forget, tell me if you've used any of these. Tell me what your top five July baits are in your area. Like it if you like it. Don't forget to subscribe. Make sure you ring that bell so you get notifications when these videos come out. Guys, as always, 100% Watch Squad, you guys helped me live my dream. It's getting closer. I appreciate you. And as always, you geeks rock. Rock.